Brock Lesnar, a wrestler fans are no more likely to see in WWE than Vince McMahon. Janelle Grant's lawsuit against Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis in the WWE has already sunk Vince McMahon. The case has barely begun and yet many fans and industry observers believe McMahon was forced to resign from the company just from the severity of the allegations. Now we've reviewed the details of Ms. Grant's lawsuit including the allegations so we won't get into them here. However, it's worth mentioning that Lesnar isn't being sued. However, an individual believed to be Lesnar but not confirmed is mentioned as allegedly making remarks that put that person in a bad light. In a classic case of damage control, Lesnar seemingly being pulled from WWE events. Lesnar didn't appear at the Royal Rumble to set up a much anticipated program against Gunther at WrestleMania. Furthermore, Lesnar's presence on promotional material for WWE 2K24 was scrubbed and his presence in the game was cut substantially back. At the same time, Lesnar is still listed on the WWE roster, unlike Vince McMahon who fans have to search for on the WWE's website like they're playing a modified game of Where's Waldo. Despite Lesnar's seeming shadow ban, rumors persist that WWE is reconsidering its decision to ban Lesnar. Like anything in wrestling, it's difficult to tell which rumors have any basis in fact and which are just fabricated. Nevertheless, some of wrestling's more reputable news sources claim there has been a discussion of bringing Lesnar back. Just when is anyone's guess, but let's look at why it not might be a bad idea and why it's probably the worst idea since Vince McMahon returned to WWE in 2022. First, let's look at why WWE should bring Lesnar back. He's still a draw. The biggest reason for a Brock return is what makes any sport or business turn a blind eye to rumored bad behavior, the almighty dollar. Lesnar is still a draw whomever he wrestles. He's lost several high profile matches against Roman Reigns in 2021 and 2022, arguably one of the worst book series, yet didn't lose any momentum. Lesnar is that rare wrestler who will always be pictured as a main eventer due to his real life reputation as a tough guy and his imposing stature. This is an unimportant quality, especially in an industry where the injury bug can sideline top stars, leaving a promotion with few or no main eventers. Such was the case in 2022 when Lesnar had to wrestle Roman Reigns at SummerSlam after Randy Orton was injured and the WWE had no viable contenders for the Tribal Chief. He can get a good match out of anyone. Although the Beast isn't known for working long matches, with some exceptions here and there, He's known for his ability to work against any style of opponent and put on an entertaining match. Some of this is due to the excitement of seeing Lesnar taking opponents to Super Lake City and watching them execute big man spots that very few wrestlers can perform. However, as fans saw with Lesnar's match at WrestleMania 39, Brock got an entertaining match out of Omos, who isn't a bad worker, but a limited one at that. Not only that, but Lesnar worked on the defensive, a side of him fans never saw before. He can still put people over. Not only is Lesnar still a draw, but the WWE, with the exception of his series against Roman Reigns, knows how to protect him, so he bounces back from the occasional loss. This is vital because Lesnar is at a stage in his career where he does more than just pop a crowd and attract an audience. Under the right circumstances, Lesnar is great at putting rising stars over, such was the case when Lesnar elevated Cody Rhodes with their best of three series last year. Lesnar's shocking assault on the American Nightmare the night after Rhodes' WrestleMania loss to Roman Reigns was brilliant booking, as Rhodes needed a high-profile program to rebuild the momentum he lost after his surprise loss to the head of the table at WrestleMania 39. Rhodes could have worked against the Judgment Day, which he eventually did, but the Lesnar program was ideal for showing just how good a wrestler Rhodes is and just how dangerous Lesnar can be. While Rhodes won the first match, Lesnar kayfabe broke Rhodes' arm before their rematch and punished Cody there. Rhodes' willingness to wrestle with a broken arm and his spirited comeback at their third deciding match at SummerSlam put aside any doubts that Rhodes was Raw's number one babyface and that his loss to Reigns was just a speed bump on his quest to finishing his story. It's difficult to imagine anyone but Brock helping elevate Cody so much. But why shouldn't WWE bring him back? Well, it's standard procedure to suspend someone. Now, aren't people allowed the presumption of innocent until proven guilty? Whether or not the court of public opinion has found Vince McMahon guilty of the allegations made against him, McMahon is presumed innocent until guilty. However, it's common for businesses to put an individual on leave, paid in some cases and unpaid in others, while allegations of misconduct are being investigated. However, in some cases, professional wrestling has released wrestlers after certain allegations, such as domestic violence. In Vince McMahon's case, the WWE faced major sponsors backing out of deals, which many believe is why McMahon decided to resign, despite denying all allegations and promising to fight them. 
In Lesnar's case, the WWE suspending him, even though this hasn't been officially stated, is standard operating procedure. It's hard to deny him being mentioned in the allegations. There's no denying that Lesnar's situation is different than Vince McMahon's. Brock's defenders can argue that Lesnar's current hiatus is a case of guilt by association. Furthermore, they can argue Lesnar isn't even mentioned by name in the allegations. At the same time, it's difficult to deny who the former UFC champion mentioned in the lawsuit is. As we'll see next, the WWE and its legal team have a big reason for wanting to keep Lesnar off WWE TV, as the WWE is being sued. And Janelle Grant is not only suing Vince McMahon and Laurinaitis, she's suing the WWE. The WWE is being sued because Grant alleges some WWE officials with power knew about McMahon and Laurinaitis' alleged misconduct, yet they did nothing to stop it. A corporation can be sued if a person proves a corporate culture exists that fails to protect employees from misconduct like harassment or other hazardous work conditions. While the WWE can't change what happened in the past, it has to protect itself from future allegations that it knew about individuals engaging in bad behavior and either turned a blind eye or refused to deal with it. Hypothetically speaking, the WWE could put itself in legal jeopardy if it brings Lesnar back without warning to determine if Lesnar was involved in any misconduct. In Lesnar's case, the WWE hasn't officially suspended him, but it's obvious that they're concerned about what could come out in the lawsuit if it pertains to Lesnar. Hypothetically, if a court determines that Lesnar engaged in misconduct before Endeavor merged with WWE, TK will have to dismiss Lesnar. Otherwise, it will be much easier for people to prove the WWE ignores complaints about misconduct should similar lawsuits arise and someone claims the WWE kept predatory individuals around, and again, we are speaking hypothetically. It's just a bad look. As mentioned, the court of public opinion holds considerable power over businesses. The WWE found this out when Slim Jim backed out of its sponsorship deal with the company for the Royal Rumble until Vince McMahon's conveniently timed resignation from the company. If the WWE decided for whatever reason to give Brock the benefit of the doubt, you could be sure that the universe would make their displeasure known any time Lesnar showed up on live television. Even worse, the WWE could face Slim Jim and or other sponsorships deciding to withdraw their deals from WWE. Until Lesnar is cleared, it's just not in the WWE's best interest to put him on TV. The WWE has enough star power right now. Now as big as a star as Lesnar is, and as much as he can put people over in the WWE, the company continues to create new stars and has also shown a remarkable ability for restoring wrestlers who slipped out of the main event back into the top, with Drew McIntyre being a good example. They also have several superstars the WWE Universe would love to see at the top, including Sami Zayn, Jey Uso, LA Knight, and even newcomers such as Braun Breaker. If the WWE feels it needs Brock Lesnar back right now that badly, it needs to take a long look at how it's creating stars and promoting its full-time roster. The WWE has many reasons to keep Lesnar away, millions of them with Janelle Grant's lawsuit, and unless it wants to open itself up to further damages, it needs to understand that Brock Lesnar can't return to TV. Businesses have never been better, and remarkably, the WWE has weathered the latest Vince McMahon scandal without serious harm. Bringing Brock back would be a serious blunder and something that just makes no sense. TKO Holdings area manual should know better and likely does. Emmanuel needs to stop any talk of bringing Lesnar back and focus on maintaining the damage control mode the WWE is in and waiting to see what happens if McMahon's case goes to trial. If Lesnar's identity in the allegations is confirmed, they will have to wait and see if Lesnar engaged in any misconduct. Otherwise, the company is risking future lawsuits, its current sponsorship deals, and even loss in its popularity. What do you guys think? Should WWE bring Brock Lesnar back? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.